Welcome, everyone. I'm Garfield Green, student president for Arizona State University's chapter of Fellowship of Christian Athletes. On behalf of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, it's my great pleasure to, to welcome everyone here to Neeb Hall on the campus of ASU in Tempe, Arizona. This Thursday evening, March 30th, 1995, for this special event. A debate on the question, is Jesus the Jewish Messiah? Between two international spokesmen and scholars, Dr. Michael Brown and Dr. Emmanuel Shochet. Without any further delay, I would like to introduce the, spokes the announcer for this evening's event, Mr. Scott Hinkle. <coughs> Good evening and shalom. Tonight's debate will focus on the two related questions. Is Jesus the Jewish Messiah? And can a Jew believe in the New Testament and still remain true to historic Judaism? Arguing the affirmative position will be Dr. Michael L. Brown. Dr. Brown, a Jewish follower of Jesus from Gaithersburg, Maryland, is a biblical and Semitic scholar, as well as a published author with a PhD in Near Eastern Languages and Literature from New York University. His books, articles, and sermons have been translated into more than 10 languages. He has spoken throughout the world, taking a message of repentance and revival to Israel, the church and the nations. Dr. Brown has debated biblical questions with rabbis on the radio, on television, and on many college campuses. <coughs> Arguing the negative position will be Dr. J. Emmanuel Shohet. Dr. Shohet is an authority on Jewish philosophy and mysticism who has authored more than 20 books as well as numerous articles. Many of his writings have been translated into Hebrew, French, Italian, and Portuguese. A renowned worldwide lecturer on Jewish thought, ethics, and social issues, Dr. Shochet is the rabbi of Kielser Congregation and professor of philosophy at Humber College in Toronto, Canada. He is widely recognized as one of the foremost spokesmen for Orthodox Judaism. And now to introduce our panel. First, the moderator of this evening's debate will be Mr. James White. Mr. White is the director of Alpha and Omega Ministries. He holds a bachelor's degree in Bible and a minor in Biblical Greek from Grand Canyon University, where he graduated summa cum laude and was a Ray Maben scholar. He also holds a master's degree in theology from Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California. He is an ordained Baptist minister and has served as adjunct professor teaching church history at Grand Canyon University. He is the author of seven books on such topics as theology, apologetics, and the text and translation of the Bible. Mr. White is an experienced debater having argued a variety of biblical topics in debates throughout the United States. The other three members of our distinguished panel are Jennifer P. Norrie, Randy Nussbaum, and Michael Simonson. Ms. Norrie graduated magna cum laude from the Arizona State University College of Law, where she was a member of Law Review. In addition to her wide experience in litigation, she has lectured on technology exchange and intellectual property issues at the Beijing Institute of Foreign Trade in Beijing, China and also served as a faculty member for the National Institute of Trial Advocacy. Ms. Norrie has formed her own law firm in Scottsdale, Arizona, where she currently practices. Mr. Nussbaum received his Bachelor of Arts degree cum laude and his law degree from Arizona State University. He is a member of the State Bar of Arizona and the Scottsdale and Maricopa County Bar Associations, for whom he is a frequent author and lecturer. 
He is a graduate of the Scottsdale Leadership Training Program and an active participant in the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce and has extensive experience in both coaching and judging high school mock trial competitions. Mr. Nussbaum's professional affiliations include responsibility for overseeing all continuing education programs sponsored by the ASU Law School Alumni Association, for which he is vice president. Mr. Simonson is a graduate of the Washington University School of Law in St. Louis, Missouri. He currently serves as Judge Pro Tem in Maricopa County Superior Court Phoenix City Court, and Mesa City Court. I will now turn over these proceedings to our moderator, Mr. James White. This evening we are privileged to have two very competent scholars before us who are prepared to give us the best their position has to offer. They have agreed to engage in a truly scholarly debate, one that seeks to concentrate on the substance of the issue alone. Many debates in our modern culture are marked by what I call cheap debating tricks. One or both sides attempt to win the audience's approval by means of humor, one-upmanship, glitzy presentation, or other emotional and subjective performances. Rather than focusing upon the issues and engaging in logical and sound argumentation, such spectacles use all sorts of improper means to sway the audience. One need only observe so-called political debates to observe how rarely the real canons and rules of proper scholarly debate are followed. This evening we have two scholars who are making mutually exclusive claims. They propose to offer objective evidence in defense of those claims. Such evidence would refer to proof or data that is normally accepted as carrying weight for both sides in the debate. Personal faith or belief, therefore, no matter how important to either debater, does not amount to proof and is therefore immaterial. To be more specific, Jews and Christians agree on the truth of the Jewish Bible known as Tanakh to Jews and Old Testament to Christians. The Jewish Bible, therefore, is clearly sufficient proof or evidence for both sides in our debate this evening. Whatever goes beyond this biblical text cannot be accepted as a persuasive argument given in proof of a point. Quotations from the Jewish Talmud, Midrashim, and commentators are sacred, meaningful, and convincing for a believing Jew, but do not prove anything to a non-Jew or others who do not accept these sources as authoritative or binding. Likewise, quotations from the New Testament or Christian commentators are sacred, meaningful, and convincing for a believing Christian, but do not prove anything to a Jew or others who do not accept these sources as authoritative. A Jewish person, therefore, cannot argue in a debate, I know this to be the true meaning of the Bible because the Talmud or Jewish tradition says so, nor can the Christian in turn argue, I know this to be the true meaning of the Bible because the New Testament or Christian tradition says so. All and any claims or allegations this evening must have to follow self-evidently from the actual text that is acceptable to both parties, either because it is stated so explicitly or because it follows clearly by way of the rules of logical deduction. All this does not preclude either side quoting or citing whatever sources they wish, provided that the debaters and the audience understand what the criteria or standards for proof are. Our debate this evening will deal with the two fundamental questions dividing the two positions. Number one, is Jesus the Messiah promised in the prophecies of the Jewish Bible? And number two, is it possible for a Jew to remain faithful to historic Judaism and also accept or believe in the New Testament? Before the actual presentations, each side will offer a statement of purpose explaining their perception and expectations of this evening's discussion. Having engaged in many scholarly debates myself, I have a few requests to make of you, the audience, and of our scholarly debaters this evening. To Dr. Brown and Dr. Shochet, I say that I, as the moderator, will be particularly strict when it comes to maintaining the agreed-upon time limitations. Staying within those limitations shows respect both for the audience as well as for one's opponent. And of you, the audience, I would like to request the utmost in respect for our debaters this evening. We have come here to listen to what they have to say. You may well feel the overwhelming urge to make an audible comment. 
fight that urge. <laughs> you may wish to express your wholehearted agreement with a particular speaker's point by clapping. Sit on your hands. You will have the opportunity of expressing your thanks to these men at the end of the debate. And further remember that any clapping or interruptions during the presentation only detracts from the ability of both speakers to do their very best. With that said, our format this evening, as you have in your handout, indicates the debaters will begin with a four-minute opening statement. We have changed that to a five-minute opening statement, beginning with Dr. Shochet. So Dr. Shochet, the podium is yours for your five-minute opening statement, sir.